Hello everyone! In this video, I would like to go over a more advanced use case of the Element Viewer, the ability to animate any attribute. This is going to be really exciting to me, because there's no, no real information about this online, and I've seen a few people ask me about it. Um, we're basically going to find out how to create our own sliders or controls, like for example the transform of something, and use those to animate whatever properties we want in the element viewer, such as, I don't know, like the ambient occlusion value, or uh, you could even change how the intensity, for example, is hooked up to be animated on its own or something. There's a lot of possibilities with this. As you can imagine, you'll need some basic knowledge about the Element Viewer first. So if you didn't already, then please check out my other video on the Element Viewer basics before you proceed with this one. This tutorial is going to be split into multiple parts. In this first one, I'll just be talking about the internals of the SFM a bit more. This is needed because we'll be doing some crazy stuff in the Element Viewer later on, so you really want to know what's going on behind the scenes instead of just following along blindly. For this part, you don't actually need to do anything, you can just watch. I will not be using the SFM much. In the second part, we'll be applying this knowledge to SFM itself. This is where you can also join in. We'll have a basic use case where we can, for example, we're gonna add like a slider to this crate here. It's not gonna be nothing special, but at least you'll see the proof of concept. And then in the third part, we'll be taking this concept to a whole new level and do something way more advanced with it. I'm not sure what that'll be yet, but we'll see. Alright, so let's get started. First off, it's important to realize that we can only really animate anything that's part of the movie world. This was already established in the past, but I just want to reinforce that. Only whatever you actually have access to in the animation set editor or similar can actually be animated fully. There are indeed some ways to interact with the game world while inside of the movie world still. Some examples being the game command and game effects classes, but these are incredibly limited, so don't expect much out of that. If you can't convert it over to the element viewer content, then you're basically screwed. Alright, so now let's look behind the scenes of animation sets. If you right click on anything, you can actually see that there's three parts to everything that you see in the animations editor, and you might not know the difference between these, and they actually have their own separate roles, which are very distinct from one another. So it's important to establish that first. When we, for example, spawn a model, it has three parts. It has the animation set, the model, which uh, generally can be called the DAG of an animation set, and the channels clip entry. Those three parts all work together to give you what you see in the 3D world in the end. To best explain how they work and what their differences and relations are, I'll be using a simple analogy, which will be a computer. Essentially, a computer should react to user input to display something on the screen based on that. With a computer, you usually give input using the keyboard or the mouse. In the case of animation sets, you have either the controls in the 3D view or the sliders. These are the parts that are corresponding to the animation set. This input data can't simply be interpreted one-to-one -one, though. A computer has to run programs which in turn convert the input into something different. Like when you, for example, move the cursor normally, you see the mouse move around. But if you move the mouse while you're in a first-person shooter, it's gonna make you look around instead. All animation sets have the so-called channels clip linked to them. That is basically the same as the programs running. The channels clip contains a list of channels, which then convert the data that they're getting from the animation sets to something that can actually be used. Like for example, the light intended intensity slider gets turned into the actual intensity value. With these cases, it's a bit simpler, but of course when you, for example, have the color red, green, blue sliders, those are a bit more complicated than just copying a value over. The channel clip also saves the values for each frame, so if you're animating something, you'll actually have all the frame, for each of the frames you'll have a value stored as well. It also contains information about keyframes and interpolation in the graph editor. But the programs can't really, you know, show anything on their own. You also have to have a medium that shows them, which would on the computer be the monitor. In this case, the monitor would be the DAG of an animation set, which then determines how it should look like and what attributes it has. 
You could in theory create a DAG without an animation set, you just couldn't control it using sliders then, nor could you animate it. And of course, everything that isn't managed by the animation set can be changed without being able to animate it. So for example, if you look at a model's skin property, you can actually type something in to change it because it's not animated using a animation set. While, for example, if you go to the light, you see that the intensity value, for example, can't be edited because it already has a slider corresponding to it. All these three parts work together to create what you know as the animation set. Another thing, which is specific to the element viewer that I didn't mention in my previous tutorial, is the fact that there is a difference between references and copies. So basically, this is already I've talked about, if you right click and copy, and then you know go paste, you'll have a second element that's the same thing. Um, if you, however, enable the unique ID column, I'll drag that over here, you can see that they both have a different ID. That's because they are different elements. If I were to change something about this one, like for example, I don't know, change the visible to false, you see that this one still stays ticked. These are completely separate from one another. However, if you go copy something and look under paste special, you see this entry here, paste as reference. And what this does is exactly what it says, it creates another element which is a reference to the original one you copied. So you see they have the same ID, which means that they are linked together. If I disable visible on this one, it does disable it on the other one as well. So references are going to be pretty important because you know how there's these three parts that I talked about, the animation set, DAG and the channels clip. They're all completely separate from each other. So in order to have a way to com communicate from one of them to another, you'll need to basically refer to the element from one place to another without creating a copy all the time. So that's exactly why this is required. Alright, so that's all the background information you need. Now, before we get into creating our own thing, we're first gonna check out how it actually looks like in action, because this stuff is all over the place and it's kind of good to know where everything is located. So, here we have our shot. This is just part of the uh, shot clip, like normal. Um, in the shot you have multiple... you basically have everything contained inside of it. You have the animation sets, which are you know the controls, the things you can move around and change. So when we look at the lights one, for example, you can see this has all the sliders here, and there's also the transform, which you can move around. This list of controls is just all the controls that you have, but they're actually ordered a bit differently, which is using the root control group. Here you can see the core group, which is kind of ignored, and inside of that you have its children. These are basically the groups that you see. So you see all, for example, is this all that you get when you collapse here. It might be better to show it in the crates example. Um, you see there's body and unknown, which are these two, and inside of those you have controls, which would be the root transform and static prop control. These obviously are going to refer back to here, so you see those are the same IDs. This is just a list of all of them, and this is basically how they're going to show up in the uh, animation set editor. Here you can also, as you could maybe tell, change the color of the groups and as well of the controls, which is interesting. It's an interesting feature that's it's kind of hidden away. And you can also change the color of the animation set itself. I think with this one? Yeah, it's with the group color, okay. Um, there's also visible and selectable, which you can just toggle here with these buttons. Alright, and the only special thing with the animation set is that it also refers back to the DAG which is just an attribute named in a very specific way. In the case of a model, it's called game model. With a light, it's called light. With a camera, it's called camera. And with a particle system, it's particle system. It doesn't really matter too much, but this just refers back to the um, DAG itself. Where the DAGs are stored is actually the scene, however. Now, the scene is basically just a root. It's something that's defines the entire map, basically. You can actually move it around as well, which is also something interesting that you normally couldn't do. So here you see I'm moving all the animation sets up by 100 units, or as you could also say, moving the entire map down 100 units. Um, you could also create an animation set that moves 
the scene around if you wanted to. Now the scene contains all of your DAGs and these are actually structured the same way that you have your group set up. So you see here is a DAG called cameras which actually correlates to the group cameras up here. And for example down here you see is the crate DAG which points to the crate game model DAG. So what you see in the end is for example this, the game model is actually what you're seeing. So this is the DAG, you can just get here pressing this one as well. And the DAG is different depending on the type, as you've already seen. The model just has some basic properties like skin, you have the list of bones and all that. And over on, for example, a light, you see there's a way more properties. A few of them can only be accessed here as well. Um, it's interesting to explore them, I suppose, but most of the time you'll not need to change any of them. I mean, the one you'll be changing the most commonly is override materials, in case you're adding those to a model. Alright, so the channels clip is a bit harder to find. It's basically under the track groups. There you have your channel track group. Inside of that you have the animation set editor channels, and here you have all the channel clips. These correlate to the animation sets. So you see for one animation set we have one channels clip as well. And under each of those you have a list of channels. So for example with the crate, uh, you can also go through it here. For example with the crate you have the position and rotation for all the bones. Or for light you'll have way more. You'll have <laughs> one for each of the sliders as well as for scaling the values. It's not too important what they do right now but just know that where you can find the channels that's basically the most important part. This is an edit from the future to let you know that you can also visualize the channels clip by double clicking your shot. You might have done this accidentally or because someone told you that you need to drag these all the way up in case you have like a shot that's longer than 60 seconds. So these are just your channel clips. So you have like the crate and it has like the time frame here. This basically decides how long the channel clip should be active for and if it's not active anymore the channels don't actually influence the animation anymore. Alright, so that should be everything you need to know in order to get started. Now of course there's way more details involved in all of it, but at least you got a basic overview of the differences between animation sets, tags and channel clips. And you also learn to work a bit more with the element viewer and its special properties. Now in the next part we'll be trying to create our own control and then later on we'll try to take this knowledge to another level. I hope I'll see you then.